Hello everyone and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about um, 3D printing uh, jets when you think about designing them to give them a more of a turbine, um, turbine-esque sounding and not like the high-pitched vacuum cleaners and stuff like that. So um, like I said, um, if you ever built or flown an EDF RC jet, you already know the sound, high-pitched, raspy, almost like a shop vacuum screaming through the sky. A lot of people assume that the sound comes from the fan or the motor or the ECS. But the real truth is most of the sound is designed, whether you mean to the, um, you meant to design it in or not design it in. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to design 3D printed RC airplanes that sound more turbine-like or give you the theory behind it. And then in the second video, I'm going to actually show you how to design the ducts and everything. And we're going to be using airflow. Um, ducting and cat decisions, not gimmicks and not foam and not expensive electronics. If you design EDF jets, especially 3D printed ones, this will be completely this will completely change how you think about sound. Now, why EDFs sound bad? Let's start with the core problem. An EDF sound doesn't sound bad because it's electric. It sounds bad because airflow inside most EDF designs is chaotic. Sharp intakes, sudden bends, rough duct um, surfaces, short exhaust, all of these things create turbulence, and the turbulence is loud. Um, high frequency noise comes from disturbed air hitting the fan blades, pressure being dumped too quickly, flow separating inside the duct. So when you hear that vacuum cleaner sound, what you're really hearing is air struggling to get through a poorly designed system. And... Fix the airflow and the prop um, and the pitch drops. Smooth the air pressure changes and the sound gets deeper. Add length and harsher frequencies disappear. That's the entire theme of this video. So we have the EDF um, duct in here, the intake, and then we have the um, the slides in here and here. Now this design here, we don't want sharp edges right here. And when this is put into a jet, um, this pretty much will probably get rounded through here. So this um, this system right here looks um, um, somewhat fine. Okay, now let's talk about why um, you know some turbines, or excuse me, talk about briefly about why turbines sound so good. Turbines um, they have long, smooth flow paths. The gradually uh, pressure changes and huge amounts of internal duct link. The link acts as a natural sound filter. High frequency noises gets absorbed, canceled, or never makes it out of the exhaust. And EDF, on the other hand, is usually short, abrupt, full of sharp transitions. You're never going to make an EDF, um, you know, sound like a turbine or be turbine like, but you can absolutely design it to behave more like one acoustically. So yeah. As you notice, you can see all this, how the air actually flows through a turbine here. It's pretty much straight in and um, straight out. So on the intake design, the biggest mistake that people do, if you, if you can only fix one thing in your design, make it the intake. Most 3D printed EDF jets fail right here with the sound. And the common mistakes are the sharp intake lips undersized inlet area, square or flat edges, air entering at bad angles. When air hits the fan unevenly, blade noise spikes immediately. And here's the rule you should remember. Your intake area should be 100 to 120% of the fan swept area, FSA. And just as important, the intake lip needs to be round. Think bell mouth, not knife edge. Now, in CAT, this means you're going to have large fillets, smooth curves, no sudden cross-section changes. If the air has to figure out where to go, it gets loud. So, like we have here, this air just flows um, straight through here. Now, the next mistake is the fan placement. EDFs hate disturbed airflow. If your fan is right after a bend, Mounted crooked, sitting in swirling air, it will be noisy, no matter how good the fan is. And um, I aim for a half to one fan diameter of straight duct before the fan whenever possible. 
This lets the airflow straighten out before it hits the blades, reducing the tonal noise and improving efficiency at the same time. Now, this is easy to check in Fusion 360, uh, Fusion 360 through section view, uh, measure tools and the line fan axis with duct center line. And quiet fans come from calm air. Remember that, calm air, no dirty air. And um, another thing is 3D printing and surface quality. This is where 3D printing really matters. Layer lines inside a duct act like tiny speed bumps for airflow. And every one of those bumps create micro turbulence. That turbulence adds hissing, the whine, and high frequency noise. Now, the solution to that is lower layer heights for ducts. Print ducts lengthwise when possible. Avoid internal seams near the fan. Light sanding or epoxy coat inside the duct. You don't need mirror, you don't need mirror finishes, but smoother is always quieter. And this is one of the easiest sound improvements you can make. Um, another thing is the exhaust design. Um, go ahead and talk about that. And because this is where turbine-like sound really starts to appear. Short exhausts are loud. They dump pressure instantly, and the sharp pressure, pressure releases um, create harsh noises. Longer exhausts do two things. They allow pressure to recover gradually. They filter out high-frequency sound. And um, here are a couple of things, um, design rules that you should follow, follow. At length, whenever you can. Use a gentle taper about 5 to 7 degrees total and avoid those sharp nozzle lips. A slightly smaller exhaust than FSA is okay. Choking is not okay, though. Longer exhausts don't just sound better, they sound deeper. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about bifurcating ducting. This is where things get interesting. Bifurcating ducts where one fan needs, uh, feeds two exhausts can dramatically change the sound of an EDF. Why? Because they split blade noise into multiple paths, introduce phase cancellation left and right, and add effective duct length. That's why many scale jets with bifurcated um, exhaust sound more turbine-like, even with the same fan. Now, the design rules, you want smooth Y splits. You want equal cross-section areas. No sharp internal corners. Remember that. That's you know, If you um, haven't noticed, I've mentioned that several times now. And you want gentle merges and exits. And yeah, you'll lose um, a bit of thrust with the bifurcated duct thing, but for sound, it's great. It's absolutely worth it. And here's an advanced tip most modelers never talk about. Your fuselage is a speaker box. Then um, the thin shell resonate at higher frequencies, which amplifies the harsh EDF noises. Now to fix this, you want very, um, very wall thickness. You know, um, at some points make it thicker and some points thinner near the exhaust. And add internal ribs or structure. Avoid large flat panels. You're not adding. Um, you're not adding weight for nothing. You're dampening the resonance. So uh, remember that too. This is especially important for 3D printed jets where thin walls are common. Now, what not to do? Reality, quick reality check. ECS, excuse me, ESC timing won't fix bad airflow. Foam won't fix pressure losses. And shrinking the exhaust just makes things worse. Sound problems are almost always geometry problems. Now, if you want a turbine-like sound from EDF, design the airflow first. Smooth, oversized intakes. Straight air into the fan. Smooth internal ducting. Long, tapered exhaust. Optional bifurcated ducting. Turbine sound isn't added, it's design. And um, if you want me to do a follow-up, I can design a bifurcated EDF duct from scratch in Fusion 360 and um, show you guys how to do that. And um, let's take a look at something else here. Oh, here's a T37. 
that I am um, designing here. Another thing that you want to look at is the, um, the distance from the EDF where it's placed within the fuselage as well. And um, let me find something here. I'm just looking for the my notes that I had for this T37 as far as what I've actually done um, to get the sound for it. Just bear with me for a second here. Okay, so this particular T37, I'm going to be using two 70 millimeter EDFs in here and for this. But here, I'm only showing one EDF. And here the center, let me see if I can... Uh, We have the EDF in here. I can lower the opacity on this left wing also. Okay. We can see the EDF unit inside of here. Now, the EDF um, unit placement, it's best to have it anywhere um, between 55 and 60% of the overall fuselage length. So whatever this length of this fuselage is here, the correct placement is between um, um, somewhere in between 55 and 60 for twin, for this being a twin. So I'm going to put the EDF somewhere right in here so I can have 200 millimeters of the airflow, or excuse me, from the EDF and the exhaust right here, and that should be between 200 and 250 millimeter lengthwise. And what I've done here, bring the opacity back up here in the fuselage. Then turn off the lines, control four. Now, we can see this is smooth up here and round it like it should be for the airflow. So when I put the ducting in here, cut this in here, these will be round going, um, you know, for the intake. And then that's going to go back to the EDF unit that's going to go uh, right around here. So the airflow is going to come straight in and straight out. And the duct ducting on it is going to be cut down... Um, probably about 10%. So the exhaust diameter of the 70 millimeter fan is 70 millimeters. So 70 millimeters um, take uh, roughly six to five millimeters out of there. So six. So this is going to be roughly 63, the 64 millimeter opening back here to straight back. So yeah. Yeah, it's 63 to 65 millimeters, and um, but 64 is probably what I'm going to use, and um, that's going to work out quite well, I think. But again, the next video on this, this is just video one on this, and the next video I'm going to actually show you guys how to design the ducting for this inside of here at the um, to give it more of a turbine sound instead of the, um, you know, the high vacuum cleaner type sound. So yeah. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit it so you don't miss the next video and, or any of my videos. And um, also hit that um, notification bell. And if you like the videos, hit that um, like button as well. And I also invite you to join my Facebook group and my Patreon site. Both are called Cat Bill Fly RC. And if you can become a paid member on my Patreon site, it's only $5 a month. You have access to a lot of my drawings, which you see me do here on my YouTube channel. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, and I will catch you in the next one.
subscribe for more.